What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a badass show, SEAL Team. Love this show. Amazing this is one show. of the best shows. It's one of the best military shows out there. Um, we started reviewing it, and I never watched it before because I was like, SEAL Team on, was it CBS? I think so. So yeah, so as soon as I heard SEAL Team CBS, I thought like it's going to be corny, it's going to be like family time, it's not going to be very about SF, it's going to be more almost like lifetime-y. Right. And then so finally we gave it a shot, and I'm on episode three, and this is one of my favorite shows. Yeah. It's so good. And recently we just had Tyler Gray reach out to us, which was, that was badass, because Tyler Gray is an actor in the show, Produce Producer, it. director. Yeah, I mean, CAG guy, this guy's a total badass. So he's like, hey guys, thanks for viewing my show. I was like, what? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> So look forward to Tyler Gray coming out on the podcast um, and then doing some filming with us. We'll do some beers and breakdowns, hopefully of SEAL Team with Tyler Gray. How sick is that That would be, be badass, because then he can give us some insight on what went into, yeah. I've always had these questions about what went into getting the actors to do it, getting everybody on board. Yeah. Because it, you could say you're a technical advisor, but you could see an issue, and that doesn't mean that everyone wants to fix that right. issue. There's a whole production on the line. You can't yeah. change everything based on tactics. There's got to be some give and take. I want to. I want to hear what kind of training they put the actors through. That too. It's so realistic. Yeah. The way they move and you know, whole shoot, move, communicate. It's so realistic. This right? show is incredible. And how does it compare to shows like Six or just any other military show yeah. that just misses the mark? It's funny how you can see just that little extra bit of credibility is so much. It's so apparent in yeah. this show. And it's it's amazing. So. If you guys like this episode, please do us a favor, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. What do you guys want to see next? Do you like this show? And what other show is the top that we need to review? Or what other movie would you like to see us review? Hit the comments down below. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Let's get into this one. You can't deny the kid's talent. Or his ego. His ego because he's refusing to check out. Yeah, to prevent his teammates from puke. Yeah, I think he's overcompensating because he's hit the bottom five. That's why. You know what? He keeps pressing the red like that. You know what he's going to do? He's going to hit a wall. He's going to slow his whole team down. Love that scene. It is, yeah. It's such a great scene. So first of all, they show the first team going through, and they show the guy that's doing well and just doing what he's supposed to do and how it's supposed to work. Hey, I need to swap out, swap in with them. It's just a well-oiled machine. We did the same thing in SFAS yep. with down pilot. You have the, all that weight underneath your rucksack. It's the worst weight and worst experience ever. And then you have a guy waiting to swap out with you. So you don't come up and say, hey, whenever you feel like it, let's right. swap. Because then people are gonna swap out too fast, too soon, or sorry, too soon, too late. They're gonna try to do that and then they're gonna yeah. get injured. So you just set a time, swap, everybody swaps. And then it just takes the whole like ego out of it. And then so what pisses me off about this scene and not the, the show, it's very realistic, but what he does and when he does it is he says it in front of the cadre. Swap out with Jonesy, he needs a break. Yeah. Like so, for one, how do you know? Yeah. Jonesy's behind you. Yeah. Like, how do you know Jonesy's sucking more than so you? This is the guy that we call a spotlight ranger. So he's trying to highlight himself in front of the cadre. In front of the cadre. himself look better. And you know, you see it all the time in an event like this, right? In SFAS yeah. or whatever. So Why it, it's so realistic. It's uh, awesome. Half mile down the road or a quarter mile down the road, you couldn't be like, Jones, are you good? 
Yeah. You know, and then you're calling like, Jonesy out. Yeah. Like, you don't know if he, Jonesy's sucking. Right. You're just making him look bad. Instead of waiting until right in front of the cadre and then saying, Jonesy's a piece of shit, but yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Jonesy's sucking back there. Yeah. It's like, come on, look dude. Look how that, strong I am. That's a Blue Falcon Spotlight that's, Ranger. Yeah, Blue Falcon. Douchebag thing forever. to do. The minute, if he did that to me and, and I was Jonesy, I'd be like, I'm going to beat your ass. That's funny. Blue Falcon. Yeah. The old buddy the old effer. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy effort. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep the cuss words so down for Abel's military editing. Military term right there. You never want to be a Blue Falcon. Yeah, so that was just an amazing scene that represented what a Blue Falcon is and a Spotlight Ranger is. Like, don't wait until you're front of a cadre, yeah. dude. That was not cool. Warships I can see, but yachts? Yeah, who wants to build a model of a research vessel? Bunch of nerds. Not me. Good news is you can buy them already assembled if you want to pay a little extra. Isn't that your patriotic duty to build it there, Davis? You know, save Uncle Sam some cash? Sonny, you do realize it's my job to pack your parachutes, right? Is she allowed to joke about that? No. Nah. <laughs> are you going to write her up? What she a dumb thing that. to say. Is she allowed to joke about that? Are you going to write her up? I'm like, no, we're not going to write her up because your feelings are hurt. I, like, I yeah. think it's funny. I think every team has a Sonny. Of course. <laughs> the guy that's just hypersensitive and mm -hmm. like, like, don't don't be mean to me. I made it here and you I deserve my spot. That? So one of the things, I, there's two things I like about this scene. One is that they let the support... Uh, girl talk openly and as an equal right because operating at a high level it doesn't matter if you're a team person or not if you know your shit and you do a really good job you get to speak like everybody else yeah. like you don't have to be on the team so it's like we had an eod guy travi travis was a gangster and everything he did was the highest level so when he spoke we listened it wasn't like you're not a team guy it's like no he was one of us right so she's showing that like I'm a valuable asset to this team, so I could speak to team guys however I want, and I could give them the shit back and forth. She's not she's not a team guy, but she's part of the team. She's part of the team. She's earned her spot. Yeah, and we've also had people, another EOD guy, that tried to come in and speak like he was a team guy before proving himself, Yep. and that ended very badly for him. I've, I've seen that myself. We yeah. had, so we used to always fired. take... Fired. <laughs> yeah, we fired his ass immediately. After that, it was a Texas trip, and he started running his mouth, yep. and I told him, I was like, you ever talk to... Because he, he started spouting off to Tony. Yeah. I said, you ever talk to my Delta like that again, I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah. And then, he, I, did he want to quit after that? I think he realized well, Travis, that it... Well, Travis realized, like... He's it wasn't like, going to work. He's like, dude, these guys are going to kill you. And yeah. Like, we're going to be living together for six months. So right. Travis, Travi had Got rid of him. Good. Yeah. But again, Travi understood seeing the writing on the wall because he's a mature human. Yeah. And it was like, this guy's got to go. He's a former yeah. NFL player, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Baller. Yeah. So, so we, we had an FSC guy one time call me a new guy. Nope. And like, oh, no. I, I was a new guy on the team, but, but no, you're he, not even on the team. He got exactly, he got way too comfortable. Yeah. Called me a new guy, and my senior stood up and said, "You're not even a guy." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but I've seen it go the other way. We had another trip. We had an FSC guy because we stopped taking him after that trip. Actually, our fox slapped the shit out of him one night. Yeah, <laughs> they got drunk, and he was just like. What's, bitch. Up, what's up with foxes, dude? Our fox strangled an Afghan one time because he was talking shit about the. You're trying to do his little tactical questioning type of thing. You talking about? No, uh, old Jerry Bear. Well, yeah, old Jerry Bear. Like the the interpreter talked bad about his uh, his uh, dang. What are the mind clearing guys? NMRG. NMRG. Yeah. He was talking smack about the NMRG, was, yeah. and NMRG said, Jerry, this guy's saying bad things about us. Yeah. And I look left, I come out of the gym, and I look left, and Jerry's got this dude off his feet and says, if you ever talk about the NMRG like again, bro, he had him <laughs> off the ground choking him. I was like, oh, <laughs> we can't do murder. His head's going to pop off. <laughs> uh, That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Forgot Anyways, me. so no, I was just going to say, I don't think that people really – understand the team the value dynamic. yeah and the team dynamic and the value that a good enabler or support personnel can bring to a team and that's why tyler gray killed it with the show because it's like he understands that certain people can talk to team guys like that yeah but certain people cannot yeah and we fired many people because they get lippy but she's clearly earned her spot and yeah. so it's, and it fits perfect the other thing i love about this scene is the ship mock-up mm -hmm. you we watch six and they got pallets stacked all over and it's like come on this is a full mock-up where you could take the roof off, see the rooms, you know where you're going. If you're going to be, you know, cutting left, you're going to be cutting right, it's going to be dark. You want to know what you're getting into. So the, the, honestly, the next step from having this mock-up is to find that ship. Like if you had a lot of time, find a replica of that ship that's out in operational. Be like, hey, we need to rent that from you for 
a, a day or two. Mm-hmm. And then they do that. They yeah, cost, I'm sure they do. It costs like a million dollars a day. They do it. I'm sure they do. As why we're the best in the world. We're not. Why not have a mock-up run? Yeah. So if it's a plane, do a mock-up run with a plane. If it's a boat, you're gonna get that boat and you're gonna get on that boat. So it goes in stages to, depending on how much time you have yep. to yeah. to put into it. So you could have a drawing all the way to a pre-done model, all the way to the actual boat itself. So my experience, it was always just like sand tables with like rocks and like pieces of like MREs and stuff. Yeah, it's because we suck. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got the money. To it's be like so, ships. so. This rock yeah. is a building. It's gonna provide great concealment from the bridge. Keep in mind, this thing's been at sea for a few weeks, so the deck's gonna be a slip and slide. We're gonna have to watch your footing. Slow, smooth, and smooth as fast. Yeah, it is. We figure two assault teams with sniper overwatch. Alpha team gets set to hit the bridge while we find out where the hostages are being held. Then we coordinate with comms simultaneous assault. Take out the bad guys at the bridge, what they call the cavalry. Take out the guards, where they start smoking the hostages. Damn. I'm gonna need Draggers, navboards, painters, bulls, hooks. Gosh, she's so, she's yeah. on it. She's shit hot. Dude. So first of all, that that chick's shit hot. Yeah. Like, but second, I love the briefs in this movie. They're so good. It's like everybody. Hey, hey, just so you know, I love what she said. Just so you know, it's been raining. That deck is gonna be slippery yeah. as shit. That's good ass intel to have. And that's what this planning process is all about. It's throwing out contingencies. Hey guys, this is the info. This is what the weather's gonna look like. Mm-hmm. This is everything that could affect every piece of equipment that you wear, what shoes you're gonna wear, how you're gonna infill, how you're gonna move. And he, he says, slow, smooth, smooth, fast. Well, that, he was just telling people, like, listen, slow it down yeah. on that deck. We're gonna have to take our time moving. Don't try to be you know, pacing it up if you're the front runner on the stack because it's gonna be real slippery. I'm gonna be taking that into consideration with what shoes I pick. Yeah. You know, so I know the decks, if I have the option to pick a certain boot, I'm going to be trying to find something that's got a softer material. Maybe we, probably seals have already worked out which, you know, footwear works best yeah. on a, a, a boat. Well, I'm sure also with them, their infill, like if they're swimming in, they're going to have a different type of shoe because mm-hmm. they're going to have to put it inside the, the fins and all that. So it's just, it's cool that it shows like the thinking and the thought process that goes into planning a mission like this. Right. You've got all these people that are all subject matter experts in their particular field. And so like, hey, make sure you worry about this. Make sure you're thinking about this. So it, it's it's a really good scene. I love yeah, this scene. I love the planning scenes in the show. They're top notch. Looks like the pirates have finally figured out how to disable the Centaurus' GPS. The last thing the position hmm. was here, by now they could be Yo, this is the first dumb thing this guy said as the team sergeant to me. He's, how big is that area? Bro, you're looking at the map. <laughs> it's the entire map. It is the map. <laughs> like, how big an area is, is what a map is. <laughs> it, like, am I stupid or does that make sense? Like, you're looking at the map. Let's say you're looking at the map of the United States and you're like, how big is that area? Like, it's as big as the United States, look, my guy. I, I think, I look at it where he's a smart ass and he's just like, Pointing out the fact that it's a massive fucking size or a massive okay, size. Okay, okay. So he was like, just how being, big is that area? He was just being a smart ass. <laughs> he's like, that's the map. And then she didn't pick it up clearly because she's like, a uh, 50 football field. Like, I just thought that was funny. Like, I'm looking at the map and watching the scene. I'm like totally invested. And all of a sudden, he's like, how big is that area? I was like, are you serious? Wait, are you serious? Are we being serious right now? Or am I too stupid to get the joke? <laughs> I am a Bravo. I could be the guy that's just too too dumb to get the fact that he was, oh. he was being sarcastic. Here's the thing that I love about this show. Again, I'm sorry I keep talking about it, but it's so good. It's like, okay, jumping on a fake grenade in training, <laughs> my guy. All right. Oh, all okay, right. cool guy. But the fact that he does something dumb and then immediately gets called out for it. I love it, yeah. He's like, okay, Chuck Norris. It's like, <laughs> thank you. That's what everyone's thinking that's watching this. It's like, come on. It's like so, he's been waiting for this moment to right. jump on a grenade. Again. Now, I'm going to look so good. I'm going to look so cool. I'm going to show them because I read in a book that one guy actually did this one time. And it's like, you don't realize that we've had grenades go off by us a lot. Like, Jerry took some shrapnel from a grenade. I've had, we've thrown grenades. They've come back on our side. So like, the nice thing about a grenade is if it's right next to you, it, it's, it's up and up out. It's up and out, so dude. So guess what? Get the fuck down. Yeah. Get close yeah. to it. 
there's and you you got a you good have chance. A chance you have a chance there's this is a, yeah, a tell me there's a chance yeah <laughs> bro a grenade goes up and out and does surprisingly sometimes it's a bad thing because we've also thrown grenades at people and they've just ran away from them the the explosion goes up and out if you just get down lay on the floor and jump away you have a really good chance of walking away unscathed yeah but you don't look as cool yeah, so it's like the whole thing where one guy in this scene jumps and grabs the hostage and jumps on the ground. Beautiful thing to do. You save the, you potentially save the hostage. You got yourself away from the up and out grenade explosion. And then this jackass, instead of just jumping the other way and saving himself, he jumps on the grenade. A fake grenade, mind you. It's not really going to go off. So you just look like a douche. It's you look like, like I could be your hero, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Uh, like, stop blue falconing. That's like, so funny. Yeah. You're, you're being such a douchebag. And the other guy just jumped for the hostage. That was a dope move. Yeah. Jump for the hostage, get him down. Boom. All you had to do was grenade. Jump the other way. Probably everybody would have been fine. Yep. But nah, you want to be the cool guy. Dude, crazy, right? So, mo so much happened in that little swim yeah. scene. First of all, it's patrolling underwater. It's patrolling underwater, which is crazy to me that you. <laughs> he you're... gave a gatwa. Yeah. He was like, yeah. hey, stay here. I'm going to go check this out. He did yeah. the recon, leader's recon. And then came back to have came to deliver. In the water. In the water. That's wild. Dive people are fucking. Yo, that's crazy, right? dope, dude. That's Yo. so dope. It's like all the tactics on the ground they did under the water just there. Yeah, he has a little patrol base. He sent out the guy to do the recon. The guy came back. Now think about this: we tell each other the recon. How are you gonna say it underwater? It's all hand signals. How are you gonna? Yeah, I understand hand I signals. Oh, it's, it's almost like. But CCB, hand, sig like, hand yeah. signals are so limited. How yeah. are you gonna tell people there's five guys up there with AKs underwater, yeah. bro? That's just experience. You're like, so with each other. Dude. You're, yeah. Yeah. you're like. Do, 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 do. <laughs> You're trying to like draw. Like, <laughs> it's like playing charades. Yeah, bro. You're doing charades <laughs> underwater. Like I had never realized how dope tactics underwater is. This show blew my mind with that. Like he did exactly our tactics under fucking water. Oh, that's frightening to me. That's <laughs> bad. <laughs> that's ass, terrifying. Dude. There are sharks in the water. <laughs> So to think about like doing this crap at night, like and a shark's like this, just like I'm gonna eat this tactical dude. Shark, shark don't care about your tactics. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming in for a meal. But then even the float up, how he did it so slowly yeah. to to get close enough to see, like he didn't break surface. Yeah. So it's like I'm not gonna swim up and have my bubbles and and like disturb the water. So he just does this slow float, gets just enough to where he could see, stops, gets his information, and then goes back down. But then now you have to relay all yeah. that information, and that's the part that sucks the most for me. I wonder <laughs> if um, potentially, I don't know if this is something they use or not, but if you could record underwater there's and then, sh yeah, it's got to be video. So then I could I could record. No, there's radios, dive radios. They, they do have it. You oh, so you can talk on water. Okay, so there are dive radios. Okay. Oh, well, this guy's they not suck. talking. He's just got to. What's that? They, they rarely, I mean. That salt, makes sense. Salt yeah. water will kill, destroy any piece of equipment. Hmm. So it's it's got it's time sensitive like it's only got a, it's got a short shelf life then yeah, maybe, it does. okay, yeah I didn't think about that dive radios that makes perfect sense people talk <laughs> under <laughs> talk underwater all the time diving, so somebody's gonna be in the comments like, like you're stupid you're you're an idiot, <laughs> but still the tactics underwater are the same it's just so cool but yeah I didn't it think is. about having the radios how do, what mask do you have to wear to be able to talk through are you, you need, just talking to the close. breather. Yeah, it would be a, a full. You'd have a full, which they don't have. They just no, have. He's, he's he's not talking. Because they have the rebreather. rebreathers yeah, in the mouth. Yeah, that's because it's a it's a closed circuit. There's no. Bubbles. So that way you don't have the bubbles. There's no bubbles coming up. So that's another tactical that's thing. Is like because if you were surfacing and all of a sudden you breathe and all your scuba bubbles come up, yeah. someone's gonna be like you're dickhead down. in the water. Yeah. And you're, you're shoot, out. Yeah, just shoot down. So he can't. So he is does not have a radio. He does not have a radio. Correct. All right. All right. So, so they're, they're using hand signals and okay. Whatever else. So I'm not a total idiot. Sometimes there's oh. about this, <laughs> about this specifically. Bravo 1 is to start and be advised multiple hostiles have boarded the Centaurs. Yeah, 
Yeah, we got that. Level one, we got 12 hostiles on deck. Any visual on the hostages? None cop shot. Four hostiles just went inside. Hmm. Them up the transport. So cool. So clearly they had some kind of uh, radios once they got surface, but mm -hmm. they probably had them in um, waterproof, bag. waterproof bags so then they could pull it out after. Uh, but I can't... Doing CQB on a boat's got to be a nightmare, right? Yeah. Everything's metal. Yeah. You have your rifle slung to your back. Any time could swing and hit a wall, Making could noise. hit a drum. Yep. Every And if you hit something on a boat, it's going to be so loud. It's not going to be a thump. In the middle of the night, yeah. that sound's going to travel. Everybody's going to know. Your steps are on metal. Everything is metal. Like It's got to yeah. be the loudest experience to, to try and be tactical on a boat. And then I liked how he had the suppressed pistol. Mm-hmm. It's the perfect perfect weapon choice to stay confined and to be able to move. I would rather have the pistol than the rifle. Yeah, it's I'll so have, small and yeah, compact. Yeah, I, I would do the rifle slung just like they had it for exfil. Yeah. When it's like everyone, everyone knows where our, the fan. shit hits the fan and we got to get out, I want my rifle now. But when I'm trying to be syrup delicious, I want to have my <laughs> pistol suppressed, <laughs> keep that thing nice and tight, dude. I love this scene. It's so cool. And then the overhead asset works perfectly with it. Hey, this is how many people we see on deck. Yeah. This is what we got. So you're getting intel constantly. Yeah. Another thing I would think about is how hard has it got to be? Have you done those ladder climbs? Yeah. Is it so, brutal? Those ladders yeah. suck. That's, that yeah. looks <laughs> shitty, dude. That's, a, that's an event all on its own. Yeah. So you're, you're coming you're, out of the water going like three stories you, in the air so on an eight-inch ladder. They're so small. They're so small. The yeah. ladder is this big. I would be it's, banging back and forth, cable, like yeah. falling yes, over. Yes. It's a cable ladder, so it's moving. You're covered in water in full <laughs> kit, yes. and you have to climb up that thing <laughs> like this and then try not to touch the side of the metal you're, boat oh, because man. the one little swing and you're going, dong. Can you imagine how uncoordinated that would be? Just Bro. The whole way up, you're banging around back and forth. Imagine you Probably got, falling at least twice. <laughs> you got that one, that one runner on your team that can't do pull-ups, and he's just like... Uh, uh, like Steve, if you don't get your ass up that ladder, we're all dead. Like, and bro. then everybody's waiting because there's only yeah, one they're, ladder. They're, you're stuck on that they're, dude. Come on, Tom, ladder. get up there. Like, he's like, I could squat really heavy. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna stay here. You gotta go on without me. I'll catch up. Oh my gosh! And then how fatigued you gotta be by the time you get to the top of the boat, and then you gotta shake it off and get into the gunfight. I'll get up there. Tom's just sitting down drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up your gun, let's go. And they're loud. Bravo team, make an entry. Bravo team, make an entry. Bravo team's going to the bridge. Beautiful, Chloe. Mmm. Mm. Oh my gosh, that was a beautiful Dude. hallway clear. I love CQB. CQB Dude, when done it's right, so sexy. It's, it's so sexy. It's, it's, the, it's oh my god. It, once you're in a stack with people and everybody's on the same page, that is one of the most like impressive things you can do in the military. That was such a beautiful hallway break. Yeah. Everyone, they had their cross sectors. As soon as the hallway comes up, they break off. And then you got center man pulling long, and then third man's going yep. in. It's just like a textbook. It everything was perfect. was perfect. And we used to have to practice that a lot as police officers yeah. for like uh, school shootings, things like that, and just flowing. Um, honestly, practice that more as a cop than I did as SF. Really? Yeah. Just nice. because hallways are everything about a school is hallway, hallway, True. hallway, yeah, hallway, yeah. hallway. Everything was hallways. And the hardest part is getting with new people and doing hallways. Yeah. But that. Beautiful. Beautiful. You, it was clear that the actor was kind of put in the perfect spot too, which that's good. Like, that's good. Um, what's the the person that the, the advisor? That's good for the advisor because it's like you know that there's there's going to be one spot that does the least amount. Mm -hmm. Put your actor there so they can't mess it up. Don't try to put him in the most pivotal spot where he has to have the most fluid action, like cross section, and, and then the hallway comes up and breaking off. Because just how we break off, we don't go. Right. We go cross, we punch our rifles back, we turn that corner, and then we push in, trying to make as small a profile mm -hmm. as possible, and then punch out. There's so much that goes into it. Everything's intentional. Yeah. Everything's done with intent. So they had the, they even, the, the actor placement was great, because he got in the spot where it's like, all he has to do is walk, and 
it it just flowed beautifully. Yeah. What a great scene. That's great. <laughs> That's so dope. <laughs> That's so when cool. I was watching this, I was like, this would be a perfect Swick scene. Oh, they got to throw a Swick scene. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I was like, and it's in. <laughs> oh, it's that beautiful, awesome. dude. There's nothing scarier, more terrifying to the enemy than a minigun. Like, oh, think yeah. about it. The tracer is, I don't, I'm not sure how many rounds it was, like every seven six, or something. Every, every six, six rounds is a tracer. Yeah. But that gun fires so fast that that tracer becomes a straight line laser. <laughs> So you could see exactly where every shot is going perfectly. And you just paint it like a picture. I could just go, yeah. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Bye -bye. It's, it's instant. You know exactly where every round is. So you're just screwed. Anyone that's on the other side of a yeah. minigun is screwed, bro. <laughs> The whole fact that they were like kind of like kind of ducking, like no, no, my guy, <laughs> you're, you're running away, it's bro. Gonna get you. <laughs> that thing is going to bite you. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. This movie, sorry for the abruptness, but we just got caught off on stories. This movie is so dope. And trust us, we're going to have Tom fully involved in all these. You're going to hear all his stories, and he's got a lot to tell. Well, the ones that he can tell. The one he's allowed to tell you. <laughs> he's got some unauthorized stuff that we don't want to dig into. You don't want that in your head at night. You don't, you, you don't you, want that responsibility. Yeah, you want to be able to keep sleeping. You don't want to know those stories. <laughs> but hope you enjoyed the episode of Beers and Breakdowns. What a great show. Can't wait to kick it with Tyler Gray next month. I'm actually really excited about that. I'm so that. pumped. I was, I'm little, so pumped. I was a little starstruck by that. I remember Kurt was downstairs. He's like, yo, bro, Tyler Gray. Just Get was, out of the bathroom. We I need to like, talk. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. But go check out uh, the FNGacademy.com. We're about to go assemble some ruck trainers for you guys right now. And just know we have them coming out every month is the goal. We're working our butts off. We are putting these together and shipping them out to you. Nobody else, we are doing it. So quality check's amazing. And anytime there needs to be improvements on these, like the lower back panel wasn't working for us, it was a little too bouncy, we're making those changes all the time. So if you guys have one, get the rigid molly panel, put your water source attached to the rigid molly panel in the two quart uh, canteen holder that we'll be selling soon. And then we're also changing the lower molly panel to be solid molly instead of having the two quart holder. So that way you could just attach the original two quart holders and it's way sturdier. I feel really stupid that we didn't think of that to begin with, but we're constantly trying to improve this thing and make it the best ever. And drop a little secret on you, we got a 3.0 coming out that's gonna be a game changer. Mm. But mm. we'll save that. And check out the boots are gonna be coming out soon. Those are gonna change the military and how we wear combat boots, promise you. All right, talk to you guys next time. Like, subscribe, comment down below. See you.